Hey there, everyone. It's Brad Kenny, Executive Artistic Director of the Agunquip Playhouse, back here with our OPTV series, Checking In. And today, I get to check in with a truly special person, a real Broadway star, icon, superstar. It's our own Angie Schwarer. Hi, Angie. Yay! Hi, everyone. <laughs> superstar. Well, I like that intro. We know that's oh. not true. Hey, yes, you are. Hey! <laughs> And you're I'm looking so happy for, to see your face. I'm happy to see your face. It's lightning a day. It's a nice sunny day. Um, but uh, we're working to get through all this here. And seeing you makes me happy on a day oh, like this. Yeah, I'm supposed to be seeing you in person, I think. That's true. Crazy for you. We're going to do crazy for you with us this year. And um, returning after we did it a long time ago, I think, actually. More than uh, it's what introduced you to us, I think, 10 years ago. And more than 10. And um, this would have been our opening week believe it or not. I know. I was going to be there with you in person. It makes me so sad, but I know. I'm know. i glad to see you now. Same here. And yes, it was, I think it was 12 years ago when, when we met. Yeah, pretty incredible. And what a gift you've been to all of us. And, well, you're sweet. Um, I remember where I met you backstage at the producers. Okay, you're right. Oh my God, you're right. It was you and um, Leroy Reams was there, Tony Danza, you were doing that. Who, who did you know in the show? Leroy? Hunter Foster, I Hunter. think, and, Le and Leroy. You're right. You Leroy was stage. right. Le Leroy was going to do um, uh, the. Um, he was going to direct and star in Alacajo Fall, and then he had to run off and I think replace David Hasselhoff in Las Vegas. If I remember oh, right. Oh, he was going to do it with you. Yes. Okay. And then he was going to do um, Lacage, and we had built it around him, and so we were just going to have our meeting and. Um, I had heard about you and he said, you know, you've got to meet Angie Schwarer. And uh, there she was. And I <laughs> met you in the glamorous backstage of the St. James. That's true, time. we were <laughs> backstage in the producers. And you were an incredible Ula on Broadway. And Thank you. So where are you now? Tell us what you're going I'm through. I'm on the West Side. And um, I guess I'm kind of doing the same thing everybody else is doing, you know, happy to be healthy and that my family is healthy. Um, but also just, you know, so saddened by all the things that are happening, but just trying to keep on going. And I don't know if it's the dancer in me, but I have to sort of structure my day. You know, I have to have a certain amount of events <laughs> that I'm doing, whether it's one cleaning project, always my dance class. I take almost every day, but two a week. Um, at my Zoom dance class with Deb Roche, my advanced intermediate jazz. And um, that's keeping me really, really sane to just keep moving. Um, I also do bar classes, you know, just on my app, on the, on the app. Um, I have sometimes have a puzzle going. I picked up, I have a friend that loaned me a drum pad. So I'm like learning <laughs> drum exercise. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely terrible, but you know, I I'm just trying to keep inspired. And are the neighbors it. banging on the wall, or do you? No, do this it's um, it's a little drum pad, so it doesn't really make that much noise. Okay. But just learning little paradiddles and you know little things. Um, I do things. I do a thing called Broadway Drive By, where because uh, we have a car, so I have a couple friends that are by themselves that we go by and bring them cupcakes or Cosmos <laughs> or both. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we're just like everyone else, doing every, doing, you know, as much as we can to sort of keep sane and um, trying to keep up on reading and educating myself on everything that's going on and donating when I can, you know. Right. Did you, were your family all okay? Family and yeah. friends? And yeah, my stepson is fine. My stepdaughter is fine. The grandbaby, her husband is fine. My mother uh, is in assisted living in Kentucky and she's fine. But of course, we, my family can't visit her. So the right. one good thing is I've probably seen my family more in this hundred and whatever it is days than I have in the 30 years I've been in New York <laughs> because we do FaceTime with my mom and the caretakers. So nice to do it for us. So, um, you know, she can see all of us. I'm sure she, she, she goes nuts seeing all the schwars, all of our floating heads. She's probably like, <laughs> but you know, all her kids, but, um, I, pr I pretty much see my family two or three times a week, which is unheard of. Right. You know, same. 
we started um, weekly family Sunday Zoom. And um, I've got a brother who lives in Mexico City with his family down there. I've got my sister and her kids. I've got my four nephews and we are spread everywhere. And I gotta tell you, most Sundays, we are all on Zoom. We never did it before. So yeah. my folks are in and Florida. And so. maybe it'll be something that will change and that it'll might stay. come out of, you know, one, one good thing to come out of this is that it might change sort of the way you communicate, you know, and talk to your family once a week because we don't do that because we're too busy. I hope so. I think you know? the same thing too. It's too busy. You've got life and, you know, it's crazy. And so you never take the time. I think that's the hardest thing for me because I don't sit still well. So it's just keep on moving and keep your brain going. And Any, uh, any special memory of a gunk or a funny memory? <laughs> My favorite, favorite, favorite story, I'll try to make it brief, was during Chicago with Rochelle. Rochelle Rack played yeah. Velma. And she just, it was the final night. And this was the, the longest I have been there because you extended the season that time, right? Right, correct. Chicago was a huge hit and you right. know, it was sold out and the audiences were incredible. So Rochelle finished her number, I Can't Do It Alone, which she actually really does tricks. She does right. a lot of acrobatic tricks. Like you've never seen the number done like this. Like she does the front walk over landing on her butt into a Valdez and crazy. So she finishes the number and the crowd goes crazy, like stops the show. She stops the show. So she stands up out of her split or whatever she's finishing at the end. And she looks at me and she does a side aerial on a dime, just like, <laughs> and then she looks at me and she goes like this, like, what am, am I about to, I'm going to do something. Right. And you're Roxy Hart. We got to tell you. I'm Roxy that. Hart. Yeah, I'm sitting in the chair because she, she. I just sit there and judge her while she does the show, or does the number. She. So she's standing there waiting for me to do something. I don't. I can't do any of that, right? So I just stood up. I turned and I walked into the wings. <laughs> and then she's on the stage, like, like where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? I come back on. I sit down in the Roxy chair and I say. Shall we go on with the play? <laughs> and the crowd went crazy. So she stopped the show like three times and in the, wow, it was the wow, final, wow. final night. It was so much fun. Wow. Uh, but that was a, yeah, that was a real, that was a goodie for me. I enjoy that. I enjoy every time I come out there. You know, your productions are top notch. And it's, um, if I'm not on Broadway, I like to be on Broadway at Ogunquit Playhouse. Thank you, Angie Shore. <laughs> And a big every, shout every, out to all the shows that I've done the, there. This would have been my fifth, right? Crazy for you again. Um, is that right? Yes, I think so. Well, one of my questions is, uh, can you name all the shows? So yeah, I'm yeah. well, first it was Crazy for You. That was when we first met. Um, then was it Chicago? Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Mamma Mia, which was like a rock concert every night. Yeah, it, yeah. and you were fantastic thank you and fantastic. that set was out of this world true right the revolving then, mama mia yeah with the big light and up annie, portals and and right, annie and which then. you know our friend jerry mitchell came to see and watched it twice he loved it so much wow 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 wow, wow. you know yeah. and just in that theater it worked so well too i thought it just felt you know what a great production that's what i love about you know i know i've told you this before but i'll tell everyone else um you always you know, pay attention to, it's very important for you to have great wigs and costumes and the sets are so rich. And I, that's why it's the top notch, you know, quality that it is because you pay attention to all those things. And I always feel glamorous it, when I come to Ogunk because you always have such great <laughs> hair and costumes. So my Annie costumes, that, that Lily St. Regis. Crazy. Cat and thing. Yeah. 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 Crazy. And I was hoping to have one more crazy for you in the hopper. All right. Well, you know, it I, it's all, it's all, um, we were working with Stroman's team and uh, to redo it. And we, right now those Broadway sets and costumes are being held all restored in storage for us. So we'll get there. Yeah, I as know. As soon as we can get that back. Was, that was the first one I did with you, which was, yep. you know, I, I always hold that one close to my heart because it was such a big, it was the first time I met Stro. It was the first, um, I had, I didn't do the Broadway company. I auditioned for the first national. Okay. And so that's when, that's when she and I fell in love 
And yeah. um, she cast me in the first National Crazy for You. And I always, I only understudied Patsy. Wow. I never did understudy Tess and I never understudied Irene. You so never in wow. the gala, the one night gala that they did at Lincoln Center, I got to play Tess. Wow. It was originated by Beth Level. Which wow. that's right. all just full circle. Any dream role? Broadway dream role for Angie Schwar. Well, I think as long as I can still get down and up off the floor, I'd like to do Roxy on Broadway. I have not. That's I, shocking. I did Chicago, but I replaced somebody who did Mona for a while. And okay. then I understudied Roxy on the first national of Chicago. I was go to hell kitty and understudied Roxy, but I've never gotten to do it. So I was ballsy enough to email. <laughs> I, I emailed Barry Weisler after uh, the prom closed because my character in the prom finally gets to go on for Roxy Hart. And so I emailed him and I said, hey, Mr. Weisler, um, because obviously, because I've done Chicago before we knew each other. And I said, you know, my character finally gets to go on for Roxy Hart, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, but it never happened. And, you know, I tried. I'm just, it's, it's going to be, you know, I don't know how much longer I could swirl that one up. You have to get down and up off the floor. I, again, I'd have to alter the choreography. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They have, the boys help, have the boys pick me up. That's true. Um, you know, I just saw it out in Vegas. Christy Brinkley was doing it. And you've got plenty of time, let me assure you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> plenty, 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 plenty yes. of time. So you're telling me there's a chance. Oh, you got more than a chance. And I think it's a great idea. So, but anyway, and, I've already done it at Ogunquit Playhouse. So as far as I'm concerned, I've done it on Broadway. There you go. Wow. Well, thank you for that. And all those beautiful comments. That was Gary McIntyre. That was an incredible production. And it's, um, yeah, we were very blessed to have Jerry McIntyre. The whole band, the whole band unit traveled downstage. And it was really, really extraordinary. And to have uh, Angie and Rochelle to do those two roles. I mean, that is just Broadway Dreamcast, and we got to do it. And how fortunate, you know, how yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Sally was Mona, right? Struthers yeah. was Mona. George Dvorsky was Billy Flynn. Sally Struthers was Mama. Mama, right? Mana, Mama, Mama. Right. Um, and George yeah. Dvorsky, yeah, he right. comes out there all Billy the time. Flynn. That's right. Paul Kreppel, wasn't Paul Kreppel? Yeah. I think he was a yeah, Amos and. Yeah, you had all these TV and Broadway stars lined up, and it was truly, we were lucky. One of those great that windows. one of my faves. Um, the prom. So tell us, so you're Angie, Angie in the prom. That's pretty yeah. extraordinary. For um, I got to see you do it, and that was really wonderful. But the journey, you want to tell us anything about how that came about for you and, well, and all of it? Yeah, I, um, I'm going to guess by now it was maybe eight years ago. I, I could be a little off, but you know how long it takes to get a show together. And I was on the set of Smash and Casey Nicolau directed an episode that we were in. And we were, I tell this story all the time on interviews, but we were going to craft services to get a Diet Bev, um, a Diet Coke. And um, mm -hmm. he says to me, he goes, you know, Bob Martin and Chad Beglin and I are writing a show and we call your, we call, there's a character, we call her Angie Schwab. We call her your name. That's what he said. Well, with his cute face. So that was how many years ago. You never know if it's going to really happen. And then cut to maybe a year or two later, we did a one day table read. And I got an email that had the breakdown of the characters. And it kind of said like, uh, you know, uh, um, what's Christopher Sieber? Christopher Sieber's name character was Trent. He was like, Christopher, think such and such and such. Um, Dee Dee Allen, Beth Level, think such and such and such. And it said, Angie, and I didn't have a last name. It just said, Angie, think you. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of just never changed. And so then we did workshops and readings and things. And Casey always tells this story that I, at one point said, when is this going to happen? Because I don't want you looking for a young Angie Schwartz. <laughs> That's true. I want it to Do be. I have to pay for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's that's how it sort of happened, and it it changed along the way as shows do. The first twenty minutes really is always the hardest, as you know, and it changed. And down in Atlanta, I I think my character Angie, her last name is Dickinson, by the way. People oh. who are young don't know who that is, but they did mm -hmm. give me a last name. Okay. Um, 
and I changed a little bit. I it kind of made they kind of made me not so just dumb show girly as I'm sort of the almost the more political one and I help them find the cause and I talk about the electoral college which real Angie wouldn't be able to spit that out so they kind of <laughs> gave me a little bit more you know um cool. I wasn't just such a dumb show girl like hey you know I'm the one that kind of finds the cause so and um they gave her a lot of heart too I Angie's the character that sort of coerces uh Caitlin who plays Emma Caitlin Kinnan and into telling her story. So it's sort of nice. It's a showgirl with a heart of gold. Right. You know, kind of sassy and, you know, one liners here and there, but with a heart of gold. <laughs> and there you are, now forever captured. And it's you, it's very much you. You're forever captured in the Broadway can canon. And that's. Thank you. It, it couldn't be a, a greater gift for someone like you. And it's, you are part of the Broadway canon, and now you're there forever. Really. Thank you. And, uh, I appreciate it. And the, the good thing is, is that, you know, the story will, the story will continue to be told, hopefully when, when and if the tour can happen. And I hope down the road, many schools will do it. You know, the story will continue because people loved it so much. So yeah. um, I can't wait to see all the Angies who play Angie. I mean, <laughs> in the prom. I'll have to have you sneak in, in masks, in wigs. <laughs> and uh, Wow. Well. It was, it was a great blessing for all of us and a great story. I mean, something that new generations will have. And you're right, they will be, that show will be performed in high schools and things for decades and decades and decades. And, I think uh, so. And I think for me, you know, The Producers was the big, the biggest show that I did that lasted the longest. And, you know, but... <clears throat> You to hear people say when you come out of your show, thank you for telling this story. Thank you because because of this show, I came out to my mom or to my dad. You know, and you didn't hear those kind of lines and you know, those kind of uh, stories in the fan lines in other shows I've done. You know, of course not. Right. Um, right. So it really had a a really really great impact, and I still get little. Insta messages, whatever you call them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From kids, and they'll send me little artwork or things. So um, it's a great story, and it will continue to be told. You know, even if we were still running, we wouldn't be running now anyway. But right. it will continue when Broadway comes back. When One it all. One question for you and the husband: Where is the first place you want to travel when this is over? <sighs> well, that's a trick question because I really want to go to Turks and Caicos, which is my favorite place to vacation. But I do want to go to California to see my grandbaby. My stepdaughter has a little grandbaby, Gracie. So we've been FaceTiming, but she's two and a half, a little over two and a half. So it's that age that you just want to get your hands on her. <laughs> perfect, perfect. She'll want to get her hands on you, too. <laughs> I don't know. She's sassy. You know, I think you'd be, you'd be a match for that. <laughs> but it's pretty great. She's losing her attention span on FaceTime with us, you know. Uh -oh. It's a... Uh, she calls, I, I get her, I have her call me Grangy. So she calls me Grangy and Papa is Rich's name. But so Papa. she kind of starts off and then they give her a snack. So she's sort of honed in on us and then she's running around, you know. Like you, she wants it in person, you know. I think it's hard. It's the twos. Yeah. Me. Contact. Um, great. Well, the last thing I've got for you is I have 20 questions in 60 seconds. And I'm going to time us. See if we can oh, pull God. it off. I'm going to start. Five, six. Five, six, seven, eight, and we're starting. Name every show you performed at the Agunka Playhouse. Oh, I already did that. Oh God, um, Crazy for You, Chicago, um, Mamma Mia, Annie, and that's it. That's it. How do you take your omelet? A, a spinach feta cheese. First cast album you ever heard or were obsessed, obsessed with? Baby, with Liz Chocolate, Callow. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. A TV show that always makes you laugh. Friends. A movie that you know every word to. Sleepless in Seattle. The last thing you bought online. Um, Frito's scoops. <laughs> <laughs> Salty or, or a sweet. birthday present. <laughs> Salty or sweet. Salty. Uh, we already answered that. What is your favorite junk food? Potato chips. Your first Broadway show that you ever saw. A chorus line. Who is your celebrity crush? Rich, don't listen. 
Jason Beatman. Don. All right. Well, there we go. Thank you so much, Angie Swara. This has been a joy for my day. That well, is. Well, sure. I was so um, looking forward to being there because you guys, you know, asked me to come, and I was like so excited to have another crazy for you, which is near and dear to my heart anyway. And Ogunquo Playhouse is near and dear to my heart. I love coming there. I love the way the whole, you know, community treats everyone and you and they just embrace the playhouse. And it's so great. And it starts from the top. So it starts from you. So that's why it has that feel. So I will come back anytime. Great. Well, send me good ideas. Send me good ideas and we'll keep moving. Yeah, we will. I can't wait. And you know, here's the thing I really can't wait for once we open up. I was talking about this with somebody. One of my favorite things, whether I'm sitting in the audience or in the show, is when the musicians are warming up, you know, and they're sort of getting ready. And then the downbeat of the overture, the prom overture to me would always kind of, you know, um, choke me up a little bit. And so I can't wait, whether I'm in the audience or in a show, for that downbeat to start and for Broadway to just come rolling back. So, and I can't wait for all my friends who, who were in shows to, for them to get everything back. Well, we'll wait for that time and that's a great message. So yeah. we'll wait for the downbeat. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Thank okay. you. Thanks for having no. me. I miss you. Miss you too. I miss you, Ogunquit.